Hi, my name is Konstantin Magnus. In this Houdini tutorial, we are going to create a three-dimensional ASCII text effect, which is uh, projecting these characters onto a mesh based on the underlying curvature or any other feature. Um, I originally uploaded a console version, which is printing these characters straight to the Houdini console, but inspired by Yunishiro's recent tutorial, I also decided to come up with uh, some subversions for an image, which may look like this, or which is raycasting meshes. So this is a rather simple setup. We're going to start from scratch by using a pick head, and we do not need to see the normals, nor do we need the shader. Let's um, just move it back by two units along the z-axis, uh, make it rotate around its axis. So when you hit play, you should see it rotating, enable the clock to see it in real time. And this is going to be the mesh we're working with. Now the features we want to measure can be defined inside the measure node. Just set the element type to points and when you s change the measurement, you'll see that the attribute name is being updated. So let's copy that parameter so our chain doesn't break. And we're going to use that later down the line. One thing we should also do is uh, bake the visualized range output and put it between a value of zero to one. Next, we are going to project a grid onto our character. Let's set the orientation up to XY plane, make it smaller so it's two by two. And this is the mesh we are going to project onto our picket like this. The resolution is a bit coarse, so let's set it to 61 by 61. And I do not want to use polygons, but just points, which makes us lose the normals. So let's use this opportunity to set up an attribute wrangle, which is going to create perspective normals. This is kind of a camera model. So let's set up the float parameter by the name focal. That's a slider that should range to maybe something like up to five. We can dial it in around two to three. And now let's actually create some normals by typing V at N equals the normalized position V at P, which will make the normals radiate to the outside. And in order to push them forward, we will subtract another vector which is set to x0, y0 and focal as the z component. So that way you should see something like a camera frustrum. You can see when we zoom out the picket gets smaller on our image and when we zoom in the points get denser on the character. All right this should be enough. Next, let's filter out the ray hit group. By going blast, we can then set it to points and paste the ray hit group. We would invert the result and delete the unused group. So now these points are projected. And one thing we would like to get is the import of the attributes from the pick head. So that way we see the area measurement or whatever we have chosen here is also being transferred. For performance reason, I will do the measurement before the transformation. But other than that, we can go on. Let's just um, now care about setting up some characters. The font node will bring up these characters and we can just copy paste these characters that have an increased visual density. So you can see that the point is rather light while the at sign is rather heavy, which is going to be like a gradient. And let's put all these characters on top of each other using a for each named primitive loop 
And the name we are going to use is actually coming from the font node when we activate text attributes, you see that there is a text index now. So the word text index is something we should copy because we're going to use this quite a bit. And you can see it's now looping over each character. So if you isolate it using single pass, you can see even something like the percentage sign, which is consisting of three primitives, is being identified as one index. Now inside the loop, we're going to use the match size node to put them all to the center. And afterwards, we are going to scale them down to 0.05. If you do not like the for loop, you can also look in my uploaded example. There's a piece of VEX which does the same thing. Now let's use the copy to point node, which we'll set to pack and instance immediately and copy our characters to the points. Now, while it works, you can see two things. Uh, first of all, all these characters are still on top of each other, so we would use the piece attribute and paste the text index. Now, it's not working yet because we're missing the corresponding attribute on the other stream. So, again, we are using this attribute name here. Let's copy the parameter and use the remap node to turn this into a text index. So let's paste the relative re reference in the original name and call this text index. Now, I know that I want characters from 0 to 8, but to make this more procedural, we can also use an expression called number of unique values, and we will refer to the font node, font1, it says we have to use d underscore primitive to refer to the primitive class and it's again the text index we're after. So now it's saying from 0 to 9 and we should subtract 1. So we're starting to count from 0. So the number of characters in here um, is now being remapped. There's one issue. Uh, first of all, again, make sure that in the measure node you really have set this to from go from 0 to 1 so it's normalized. And the other issue is that the text index is currently a float value. So let's cast it, the text index, to an integer. All of a sudden, these characters are being used correctly, so when it's more dense, it's using the at, and when it's more light, it's using the point. At the same time, the orientation looks a bit warped because these are still the normals we have created here. So what can we do is we would just disable the transformation. All right, let's hit play to just see whether it works and we can also play with the perspective slider a bit to see our kind of zoom effect. All right, thank you for watching. That should be it.